Instead of being super self-critical today, we're gonna learn some stuff and you're gonna be able to tweak what you're doing. And I know if you do this, you will see a difference. In today's video, I'm going to count down the eight tips on how to talk to the camera for your YouTube videos. If we haven't met, hi there, I'm Tracy Rose. And on this channel, we create fun videos about building your brand on videos and especially YouTube all around a family. So if you've got kids or even fur children, I have a lot. You're in the right place, so let's get started. Talking to a phone or a camera lens is not really very normal, is it? Yet here we are having to do it for our YouTube channel or any other types of videos you have to do for your business. Now you have to talk to these things like you're actually talking to a real person and that's kind of strange. Alrighty, let's start at the beginning, number eight. prepare yourself. So I prepare myself physically. I make sure kids are entertained. I make sure the pets are fed. The amount of times my cat has come in and meowed at the video is kind of annoying. So I try and prepare everybody in the household as much as I can. I yell out to the kids, guys, I'm about to film. But I also prepare mentally. I know some people like to kind of like hype themselves up with some music, move their body. I've talked about this before. I use essential oils, using things that are quite uplifting, promote feelings of happiness or productiveness. I know that spearmint and peppermint oil or citrus oil is usually quite effective for me to get my mindset changed because smells trigger certain parts of the brain. Sometimes people need a little quiet space, maybe like a little couple of minute meditation to get themselves centered and remembering what they've got to say. Often I take a moment to think about who am I really doing this for? So I've thought about you before I'm even recording this video to make sure that I'm actually delivering the right value to you and in a way that I hope is going to really sink in and make a difference. Now, I don't know if I sound like I practice or not, but I kind of do. And I always have ever since I was in the radio industry. In radio, I would write and read the news. I would edit all the audio, I'd put it all together. And then I'd run down the hallway to the newsroom. And then I'd have to actually read the news to Sydney or Canberra or Brisbane. Sometimes I would read the news, what we call sight unseen, but I never felt super, super confident doing that. I always like to quickly go through my script one more time one more time. <laughs> One more time before I went on air. And that always meant that I just knew how to maybe say complicated names or to remember to like change the tone of my voice because I wouldn't want to be like saying something really happy if 10 people have just died in a train crash or something like that. You've got to have the right tone when you're reading certain parts of the news bulletin. Now, I don't particularly write scripts for my YouTube videos. I love to sort of have dot points instead, but I do kind of, talk out aloud about what I'm going to say before I say each point. And even before I get on camera, I want to make sure that I've got all the things written down that I do want to say. So practicing is something that's really important. Now, if you want to write a script, you can. I always found that I kind of had this weird robot voice when I read a script doing a video. I just kind of couldn't do it. So I've worked out another technique, which I'm going to share with you in a moment in another point. But let me get to this one first. Now, hope you're liking this video and you're getting value out of it. If you are, please give us a thumbs up and like this video. This one's about getting comfortable where you're sitting. Maybe you want to stand. When I worked back in radio, all the announcers had to actually stand during their shifts. And I used to stand when I would read the news because it kind of gave me more energy. I could get a deeper breath into my lungs. It gave a different energy to the whole delivery of things. But I'm going to sit back down now. <laughs> okay, a lot of people who haven't done a lot of videos before kind of get this wrong. And you know what? It's such an easy fix. They don't look in the right spot on the camera. If I'm recording with my phone, I've got to make sure that I'm actually looking on the part where the camera is. And I know on a phone like this, with the face being quite dark, sometimes can't figure out where that is. So just pop on maybe a little piece of blue tack or a little tiny sticker or something. I don't care if it's a mini post-it. Stick it there so you know where to look. If you're recording on a camera, sometimes having a picture of a loved one or even your ideal client or what we used to practice in the newsroom 
was like the teddy bear method where I'd have a little teddy bear in the studio so I would read the news to the teddy bear. <laughs> it made me feel like I was actually telling the news to someone. I don't do that so much now because I'm so used to looking down the barrel of the camera. I know you're right there. I'm okay with it, but it's still a little bit weird talking to a little piece of technology, but you do get used to it. Okay, so this is the point I was talking about before. do jump cuts. This is where basically you don't have to remember your whole script as such. You can actually just do one point at a time. Have you noticed like I'm kind of cutting in and out? I've taken lots of deep. <sighs> like I would just cut that out, right? So I would not leave that in there. What I teach people to do is just say one point at a time. What are you gonna say to get people's attention at the start of the video? And then just stop talking. Like you can keep the camera rolling, you can keep your phone recording, but you just stop, right? Then you introduce yourself and then just stop talking again. And then have a look at your notes. Cause if you can't remember what to say, look at your notes. Oh, okay, well, what was point one? Right, get yourself ready in front of the camera. Start with a smile, if it's a happy topic. <laughs> And then just say point number one. And then just stop talking. Move around if you like, like I do. And if you need to check your notes, remember what you got to say in the next sentence, then say the sentence. Then what you do is, in the editing process, is you go back, you just chop out all those chunks. Really, really easy. Just keep the camera rolling the whole time. This actually does two things. So first of all, it means that you don't have to remember everything that you want to say all in one go, thank goodness. And then the other thing is, it kind of makes your video much more visually interesting. Now, if you're doing a live video, that's completely different. People are a little bit more understanding, but when you've got a pre-recorded video, you don't want to sit there and listen to my arms and ahs and my rambling thoughts. Like you want tight, succinct, stuff. All right, counting down, we're down to number three, I think, yes. This is about being more engaging on camera. So you don't actually have to be better than anyone in your niche. You just have to be different. And by being yourself, you are just naturally different, okay? So what I want you to do is be yourself on camera, but be your best self. So that usually entails being a little bit extra <laughs> because I feel like the camera lens or your phone lens kind of sucks a little bit of the life out of you. Now, what I mean by that is because I'm not there physically, I think some of the effect of my mannerisms or my body language is lost through the lens of the camera. And so if you're gonna give 100% of yourself and your energy on camera, I would say give 120. If you think about anyone that you watch give presentations maybe at work or maybe an amazing teacher that you've had in your life and they were really engaging, they usually got up at the front of the classroom and gave that bit extra of their personality more than what they would than if you were just having like a private conversation with them. So be you, be that little bit extra you. <laughs> be your best self, give that 120%. Okay, we've got the last two happening right now. I'm talking about practice. This is different practice to the first practice which I was talking about, which is kind of about practicing what you've got to say in the actual video. This practice is about doing videos in general. You will improve very, very quickly in the beginning if you putting these tips into place. But talk to me when you've done 10 videos, 20 videos, or 50 videos. That's when you'll notice a massive change. Just by practicing, you will get more comfortable in front of the camera. You will really learn how to talk to the camera for your YouTube videos. You will just naturally be more engaging. This is the most important one. <laughs> I really recommend hiring a coach. Having someone that's sitting there that maybe can critique your stuff in a really nice way, like I do with my own clients, really does help you level up in a very, very short period of time. Like I can usually pick out certain things that you can change immediately. This one I used to do with a lot of clients who would actually physically come to my house. I put them in front of certain backdrops. I have all the lighting, I have the camera stuff, but I also do it online as well so I can critique your 
videos, but I'm really kind and caring about it. But if that's not in the budget right now, that's okay. Go find someone, maybe a friend of yours, who's nice, <laughs> to maybe give you some feedback. You know, ask them to watch your video and say, hey, would you give me one or two pointers on how I could improve my presentation skills and how to talk to the camera in my YouTube videos? People love helping others. And maybe you could offer to do it to them in return, but don't push it on them only if they're open to it, okay? <laughs> now, in the next video, I want to show you a video I did with my daughter. She's someone who I've been teaching how to talk to camera really, really well, and she's improved a lot. And there's a video next on how she's actually earning $200 a week with only 300 subscribers on her YouTube channel. So go watch that and enjoy.